They call Florida the Sunshine State and it is living up to its nickname. We're at Ace Cafe Orlando and it's a picture perfect day to hang out with a few hundred of our closest friends. Wall to wall Chevrolets have transformed this parking lot into a classic car fantasy land. So come on, let's cruise. From Ace Cafe Orlando, this is the Menard Chevy Show. With so many great cars to choose from, we'd better get right down to business. Let's kick it off with the winner of the Rock Auto Restored Award. You'll find a lot of cars at every car show that are restored from the ground up, and that's great. But here's one that's 50 years old and almost entirely original. Ned, tell me about this car. Uh, it's a 69 Z28 Coupe, 46,000 original miles. It's got all the original assembly line correct parts on it. It's a 302, 290 horse, got a Muncie M21 four speed with a 355 positive rear. I was looking for a Corvette actually, and I ended up on eBay and I found this one for sale and it didn't meet reserves. So I flew out to California to look at it and bought the car. What have you done to it since you got it? I pulled off the suspension, rebuilt everything, repainted everything, but used all the original parts that came from the factory starter, water pump, and a brake booster were all aftermarket parts when I got it, and I searched and found the part numbers with the correct date codes and put them on the car. Uh, <laughs> when I found the starter, I bought it, and then a couple weeks later, I found another one, so I bought that, and then found a third. Same thing with the water pumps. Run across a couple of brake calipers that were rebuilt that have the exact date code and part number that I needed, so I bought those. I got them all sitting in a cabinet in my garage in case I ever need them. It's easy to look at this interior and think that you probably redid everything in there, but that's not the case, right? No, the interior is 100% original. Got the original steering wheel, original carpet, door panels. I actually pulled the door panels off to clean them and they're date coded on the back. Carpeting, it, I peeled it up. It still has the old insulation on the floor. It's all cracked, but it's all the original. I just put the carpet right back down. At the time I bought the car, I didn't realize it was as original as it is. Over a period of time and having people look at it and certified by Jerry McNeish, the Camaro expert, found out that it was more original than I thought. So it was very important for me to put it back and make sure I kept it that way. How much do you rely on Rock Auto? I have three Chevys now. I have a Chevelle, a Corvette, and a Camaro. And I bought a number of parts from Rock Auto for all three vehicles. Their website is extremely easy to use. Their customer service is second to none. When you order parts, you get them quick, and the prices are always right where they should be. Congratulations to Ned Cohen. His cool Camaro captures this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. Well deserved for sure. We think you'll like this one too. It's a 67 Nova. It's owned by Don Musica, and it's our first producer's pick. A good friend of mine, Jeff Anderson, paint and auto body in Winter Springs. Purchased it, painted it, had to get rid of it. He does some of the best paint jobs in the country. He's actually sold cars on Barrett Jackson that uh, one of them Sylvester Stallone purchased. And we should know Jeff Anderson's name if you're a car person, right? Yes, his brother's Greg Anderson, the Summit race car driver. It's again, since he's a friend, I purchased it not running, and I pretty much finished it off. The hole underneath was hand sanded, painted, stainless steel fuel lines, brake lines. I went through the whole suspension, replaced every bushing, ball joint, tie rod, idler arm, pitman arm everything. If it hasn't been refurbished or restored, it's been replaced. How important is it for you to keep a car like this looking like the original? It's very important. That's a good question because a lot of guys like going in a different direction and that's where this one was going when I got it. It was out actually trying to almost turn into a drag car and I didn't like that. So I took the lift bars off of it, the tachometer, all the gauges and wanted to bring it more to a street car that can be driven and taken to the shows. What was it that made you said, I can make this into my project? Like you say, Jeff's paint jobs, looking down the side of it, it's black. There's no hiding that, it's unbelievable. And I just love 66 and 67 Novas, AKA the shoebox body style. What is it like to have taken a car like this and touched every inch of it and been responsible for the way this whole project's turned out? Right here is when it pays off. Everybody looking at it, all the thumbs up, all the wow, I can't believe it. This is the payoff at the car show. Well, nothing will make you more proud to be an American than checking out a classic Corvette. This is a 1962 owned by Gordon Brown out of Leesburg, Florida, and it is a beauty. It's been a 12-year labor of love. I bought it as a complete basket case, chassis on one side, body on the other side, and a pile of junk in the middle. Since then, I 
basically rebuilt every component on the vehicle or was able to find original stock pieces still in the GM boxes. Since the gentleman I bought it from blew the motor and the transmission up, it now has a 71 350 Corvette engine. Supposedly 400 horse, I'll say 375. We have a 700 R4 automatic. Anything that was done to the vehicle that was not factory when I put it back together, I fabricated brackets and everything. Nothing has been welded to the original frame. Had custom fiberglass mono springs made for the rear end. Had custom coil springs cut for the front. It drives like a mid 80s car now. Put air conditioning in it, which is a must down here in Florida. I also have heat and massage in the seats, which is a must when you have a bed back. Power windows in it that did not come with it. Have the matching hardtop for it. Original looking interior, but it was all custom made because of wanting the bright white leather versus the old faded almond white. It's just been a labor of love, and the most enjoyment I get is bringing it to the shows and letting everybody else enjoy it. Still so much more to come from Ace Cafe Orlando. When we come back, we take a look at some terrific trucks and a couple of really rare rides with foreign badging and American roots as the Menard Chevy Show continues. The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. And DJS Fabrications, the best mobile car dolly built today. Evapo Rust, super safe rust remover. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Ace Cafe Orlando, home of this week's Menard Chevy Show. My head is on a swivel here. Such a great collection of cars and trucks. So let's keep on trucking with our producer's pick. Sam Ramadan has a 65 C10 pickup that'll make you green with envy. I find it on the internet, on eBay. Uh, I love Chevys, so when I seen it, I fell in love with the body, but that truck was completely destroyed, rusted, non-drivable, so I got it shipped from Georgia to St. Cloud to my shop, took it apart, and started the fun. It took me and my team about three years and a half, and we never finished, so we're still working on it here and there. Tell me what's under the hood. It's a 305 small block. The LS was not really popular back then. If I know better, I went with the LS. But I'm happy with what I got right now, you know. What do I see in the bed of the truck? A lifted airbag. You got the compressor and a flat air tank. If you're into low styles, you definitely you got to bag it down. One thing that stands out to me is the interior. Uh, you believe it or not, this is the second time I got the interior done. The first one I done it was white, which is I loved it. But the job I do, I'm always a greasy. I got to take the white out. So I end up going with the brownish and the leather look to match the bed. Now I'm no expert, but I don't think this is an original 65 color for this truck. I saw a Lamborghini, 2014 Lamborghini at the car show, and I fell in love with that color. How much do you drive this? Probably 10 miles in a month. <laughs> Up next, an El Camino that'll knock your socks off. It wowed the judges here too, so much so that they made it the winner of our OPGI Original Award. Well, the engine under the hood of this 69 El Camino is so shiny and there's so much chrome that I could see myself in it. And boy, would I like to see myself in this car. But Jay, you get to see yourself in this car all the time. How long have you been working on this project? I've been working on this project for close to 29 years. It's been done for a long time. It's just a maintenance. Keep up the chrome, re-chrome, change wheels. So much chrome you've given the truck a nickname. It got to the point when I chromed the rest of it as you see it now. One of my friends started calling it and me Chromeo. Instead of fighting it, I accepted it and we called the car L Chromeo. The vehicle looks great, but it can go. Tell me what's under the hood. It's a 502 dynode at 506 with Fitech fuel injection and no build inside the engine. It's a crate motor from GM Performance been so much work done to this vehicle. How much did you do yourself? Nearly all of it. There are a few things like I don't open up transmissions and rebuild those and I don't do rear ends anymore because of the weight. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about the interior. It's completely stuck down to the AM FM radio that still works. It does have a set of gauges, I call them knee knockers, but uh, that's to protect the engine. 
Well, you know everything about this car, but there's one thing you don't know, and that is you are this week's OPGI Original Award winner. Why, thank you. While we're talking OPGI, tell me what you got on this car from OPGI. Well, having done six other El Caminos of the same year, so OPGI has some trim that they made themselves and they fit better. That's it, simple. Window trim, door trim. Instead of looking around for deals, I go to them for it. Congratulations, Jay Bernard and El Cromeo, winners of this week's OPGI Original Award. And now, another El Camino that gets our stamp of approval. We proudly declare John Moore's 67 to be our next producer's pick. When you got it, what kind of condition was it in? It was a basket case, an abandoned project. It was pretty good shape, had a decent body, but it's just a shell. I upgraded some of the front suspension, put a Jeep Cherokee steering box in it and tubular control arms to make it handle a little better. It's got the tilt steering wheel from the factory. It's got a 350 in it with a factory throttle body fuel injection, 700 R4 overdrive transmission, and 343 12-inch rear end. Your bed is stunning. How did you get it to look like that? A lot of hammer and dolly, a lot of blocking, and a port of power to roll the back panel to bring it back out from the thing sliding forward and denting it in. What have you done to the interior? I got stock bucket seats with it, even though it was originally a bench seat car. The console put gauges in the dash that looks like a factory SS kit. Other than that, it's pretty much a stock interior. So when you set out to restore a car, you probably said, well, it's not rocket science. I got that handled. Tell me about your day job. I used to be a cryogenic technician on the space shuttle program, but I have been a mechanic in my past. When I was young, I worked in a body shop part time just so I could learn to do it myself. This is actually the 23rd car I've built. What is it about El Caminos that tickles your fancy? I had a 66 in high school, but I liked the 67 a little better. And I set out to look for a 67 when I decided to build this car. Still to come, I bet you never thought a grocery getter could be this good. And I bet you never thought a Menard Chevy show could be this loud. Come on back to Ace Cafe Orlando. You don't want to miss this. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy show at Ace Cafe here in Orlando. You're in for a special treat. Okay, you're not. I am. I've always wanted to do this. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen. Start your engines! <laughs> Members of Orlando's Outlaw Garage and a few of their friends putting on a great show for everyone here at Ace Cafe Orlando. And by the way, the folks at Ace Cafe have been great hosts. If you like cars, bikes, and food, and who doesn't, they've got it going on. Tell me, what is Ace Cafe? Ace Cafe is 32,000 square feet of awesome space. We do a car show or a bike show almost every single day, and we have awesome food and rock and roll. The original Ace Cafe is in London, and they're really big on bikes. We found them in Orlando. They love both, so we kind of adopted the car culture and do a car or bike show almost every single day of the week here. I mean, we have hundreds of people that show up to our car shows. They're all from different types of backgrounds and walks of life, but they all have one passion, and that's cars and having a good time. So it's awesome to see everybody get together. What do you want folks who come here to remember about Ace Cafe? I think a lot of people are a little, you know, they're not sure if it's a family-oriented spot, and it is. I just want them to have a good time and to remember that, you know, on the weekends when it's a nice, beautiful day out, this is the place to be. Here's a car I bet you haven't seen before. I know I haven't. It's brought to you by Zing T, and it's naturally cool. Well, a quick look will tell you this is a 1967 Nova, but if you take a look up front, hey, that's the front end of a 1966, and you look at the badging, it says Canso. So what does that mean? Well, this is an Acadian out of Canada, and Tara Bush owns this beauty. She found it in Vancouver. What is an Acadian? Acadian was the Canadian's own brand. GM of Canada came up with the brand, and they sold through Pontiac and Buick dealerships. And it went on from 64, I think it is. But the Acadian name was on the Chevelle, and then they switched to the Beaumont name, and then the Acadian followed the Nova up into the early mid-70s. But they're very rare. What was this car like when you found it? It was pretty much like it is now. It was painted in 91. What in this car is still stock, and what has been changed? Well, the original motor still in the 283 power glide transmission. I changed the front end, and we put a uh, beefier suspension on it so I wouldn't go through the tires on the power tour. So the alignment now holds. And then, of course, air conditioning and the rear end of the gear, I had to change that a little bit to get better gas mileage on the power tour. 
What kind of questions do you get when you roll up in this thing? Why would anybody put those chrome things on the fender? Did you do that? No, it's factory. Then they go, what is it? They walk by, stop, back up, look at it, and then you get that funny little look. So then you have to tell them what it is. Nice car, eh? Well, thanks to Tara Bush for showing off that Canadian classic. It's brought to you by Zing T, and it's naturally cool. Well, from a Canadian car to a car with Canadian owners, Sandy Gray and her husband Steve are from just outside Toronto, and they brought their Malibu wagon to Orlando for its Southern Car Show debut. We've had the car for about 18 years, and the car's gone through a few changes. It was originally a bench seat car, and we've put in the buckets, which are 65, put the console in, which is a 66. We've done a lot of things like sound deadening inside to keep it nice and quiet, and we have that interesting cooler conversion speaker box. How'd you come up with the idea for that? Well, actually, I don't know where Steve got the idea from, but one day he thought, you know, you take a wagon, and it has horrible sound, because unless you cut holes in things or put ugly boxes in, you can't make it sound good. And he thought, well, how can we make this way cooler. You saw a cooler, a Coleman cooler, and thought, man, we could convert that. I'm the handy girl and the woodworker, and so it's been gutted, and it's got MDF inside, and that particular one is the only one I've done with a 10-inch subwoofer and the two 6x9s in the end. What makes the music outside? What do you have under the hood? It's got a fuel injection engine out of a GTA Trans Am, 700R transmission in it. It's got floor shifters you saw, which looks kind of nice, and it goes really well. When we bought that car, it had just under, I think it was 100,000 kilometers, and we've never touched the engine. It's still running on the engine we put in it about 18 years ago. Steve's the brains behind this stuff. You know, sometimes he says something and I'm thinking, really? And then we do it and it's like amazing. I kind of got into it because I married that man. My daughter and my son love the cars. My son's in a position to be involved in the cars. He's got a couple of older vehicles that he's modernized and done stuff with. His boys are five and two and they love going with dad in the car or with granny and papa and away we go. We have a lot of fun. We go to shows together a lot in a couple of different cars and it's wonderful. It's the best hobby ever. Please stay seated. This ride has not yet come to a stop. Still more in store from Ace Cafe Orlando and the Menard Chevy Show next. The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Heat Shield Products, America's high performance insulation. R3 Performance, quality parts, attention to detail, and innovative design. Champion Cooling Systems, high performance aluminum radiators. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show, coming to you from Ace Cafe Orlando. This next producer's pick goes to Tommy Smith and his super sweet Chevelle. This car is a 1967 Chevelle. I've had the car just about three years. Body off restoration. Currently it has a LS3 with the six-speed transmission, Mosier Fab 9 rear end, coilover suspension, four-wheel disc brakes, air conditioning, full custom leather interior. I've used stock bucket seats, but we've used TMI foam and we've covered all that in leather, made a custom console and a custom gauge package for the dash. One thing I've added to this car was remote start. So when I'm at car shows, everybody can get mad at me for doing this. I can also open up the exhaust so we can make it louder like that. I can also turn on the headlights. What's the biggest challenge when it came to restoring this car? I have a two-car garage, so getting the body up off of the frame and completely sandblasting the frame and then putting it all back together in the garage was probably the biggest obstacle that I had to overcome. What is the coolest thing about owning a car like this? And there's several cool things about it. The biggest thing is, once it's done, being able to take it to shows and have everybody tell you what a good job you've done on it. Well, good job. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a heck of a party here at Ace Cafe Orlando. And when it comes to big events, downtown Orlando is the place to be. We embrace the theme park area, but downtown Orlando in particular is the urban core for not only Orlando, but for Central Florida. So downtown Orlando is very, very vibrant, very vibrant nightlife. If you hadn't been here after 11 o'clock, you need to try that. It's a lot different in the daytime. This is no place better than the Ace. Good food, good libations, good people, lots of space, and other things to do in the area. So uh, we think we take up well for this. Now, I don't know a lot about the Holden Maloo, but I do know it is Australian. I also know that that means the steering wheel should be on the right-hand side, but this one is on the left-hand side. 
It's a 2012, and it's owned by Rodney Rapp. And I gotta ask you, how did you find this with the steering wheel on that side? Uh, it was made that way originally from General Motors. Holden, which is in Australia, and they made five of them, and that's all they made. And to find a car like that and to get it over to the U.S. is very difficult. So it's not as simple as just ordering a Holden and having it shipped over from Australia, is it? Absolutely not. You can't get one shipped from there in one piece. You have to take it apart, put it in containers, ship them different places, gather up the parts, put it back together. I've seen people walking by this, and they stop and look, then they look again, because they don't know what it is. So what kind of questions do you get about it? Uh, you get the same question all the time. What is it? Where'd it come from? Is it an El Camino? Where'd you buy it from? How much it cost to get here? I mean, all the typical questions. You know, Holden is a General Motors company in Australia. They've made the GTO there, actually. And uh, this is basically just a Pontiac G8 made into an El Camino. And they were all made in Australia and then actually shipped to the US. Very unique car. That's why I call it one of a kind. I've never seen another one like it anywhere. They're all white. They're all the same car. And what is it like under the hood? Same powertrain as Corvette, LS3, 6.2 liter motor, six speed automatic transmission, and it flies. <laughs> well, that's gonna do it for us here in Florida. A special thanks to our friends at Ace Cafe Orlando for an epic Chevy cruise in. We hope you'll join us again next time for another Menard Chevy Show.